baptized. Each week we come to you. Each week we come to you during the week for 15 minutes to give you an update on the news as we hear it and see it right here in the city of Chicago, on the south side of the city of Chicago. And though we are a media company that broadcasts from the United States of America and from a specific city, the city of Chicago, we also have listeners around the world. To our listeners, we invite you to log on and go to urbanbroadcastmedia.com and download our app. That's urbanbroadcastmedia.com and download our app. After you've downloaded our app, you can then listen to us throughout the day. On the top of the news, what do we have? A tax cut that looks as though it will pass the House, the House of Representatives as well as the United States Senate. It's a package that was negotiated in conference committee between leadership of the House of Representatives and the United States Senate of the United States of America. This tax cut is forecast to primarily benefit those who are wealthy and to minimally address a tax cut for the sagging middle class as well as the poor people here in the United States of America. It means if it is passed a end to certain elements that are critical to the Affordable Care Act that was adopted by both houses in, for, in 2010 by the Obama administration. It could be the foreteller or forerunner if this bad bill passes of the unraveling of the entire Obamacare program. A program, my friends, in the United States of America and around the world that is roundly approved by 65% of all Americans. And it is adamantly approved by African Americans and Latino Americans and women. Recently, the Republican administration exper experienced a harsh awakening. And that awakening was that even though the leadership in the Republican Party chose to back Roy Moore, Roy Moore lost for the United States Senate seat of Alabama. That should have been enough of a wake-up call to let the current administration know, as well as the members of the Congress know, that we are not here for a new day. We're here for a day that respects the rights of every American middle income as well as upper income. It respects the rights and interests of blacks and browns and Latinos and Asians here in the United States of America. It is a country that worries about mothers who've got children and mothers and women in general. So the point is it's time for a compassionate tax cut. The issue is whether or not this particular tax cut that has been pushed through the United States Congress is the tax cut that is going to benefit all Americans equally. We're going to have to take a short break, and when we come, we're going to have to take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to pick up our conversation. Stay with us. Hello, this is Leon Finney. We're back live here at urbanbroadcastmedia.com. And my brothers, my brothers and sisters, we've got a major happening around the world, right all the way to South Africa. And as you know, your host has been to South Africa, spent a month there to understand how the South African government operates. I was there with my daughter back in the early 2003. All right. But anyway, um, much has happened since I was in South Africa. But most importantly, we have now before us an election, an election for the office of president of South Africa. Uh, the current president of the South Africa, uh, Jacob Zumba, has served his term, and he can no longer run again. 
and the party, the ANC party, a faction of the African National Congress Party, that's ANC, has chosen to, uh, to, chosen to support uh, Mr. Zuma, wife, his ex-wife, I should say. That her name is Delima uh, Zuma. She is a doctor and a former government minister, and she was recently appointed to a parliamentary seat. She has pledged to pursue her husband's favorite policy of radical economic transformation to bring greater equity to an economy still largely controlled by Africa's white minority. Interesting. On the other hand, there is another candidate who is also running from Nelson Mandela's former party, and that is Mr. Uh, Mr. Rampa, Ramaposa. And he is Cyril Ramaposa, and he's a former uh, Union Commission chairman, and he is running against uh, Ms. Zuma. He proposes, of course, to end corruption, and uh, uh, he was there to help negotiate an end to apartheid as we know it. Yet, over the years, he's become one of South Africa's wealthiest men. I don't know how that happens when you become the, one of the wealthiest men in South Africa, yet your economy is mired in poverty. We don't know, and it's not for us to say on this side of the Atlantic Ocean, but it is for us to watch and see what happens in this African country that whose economy is still controlled by a white minority. The issue is whether or not the blacks and the African, the, the, the blacks in South Africa are going to ever have economic freedom. They've got political freedom, but do they have economic parity and equality? Hey, it's the same situation we've got here in the United States of America. African Americans are still not equal here in the United States of America. So we've got peoples of color, I think, challenged around the world, not only in the United States of America, but also in South, South Africa. My friends, this is, I think, one of the most in interesting elections that has happened in South Africa in many years. I'm going to have to take a short break, and when I come back, I will, we will pick up our conversation. Stay with us. Do we know where Poland Elementary School is? Yes. Okay, I'm, just, I'm looking up on my phone. What is it called again? Poe. P O E. It's Edgar Allan Poe. Class. Oh, okay. Poe. Po what? Elementary. Poe oh. Classical. It's Edgar Allan Poe Classical Elementary School. Okay. Yeah, it's on um, 10, 10 5, 3, 8 South Langley Avenue. 1050? Oh, uh, uh, 10 0, 5, 3, 8 South Langley Avenue. And you're back. My friends, we're back live here on urbanbroadcastmedia.com. Don't forget to go to uh, UBM and draw down our app. Now we've got a local, local, I think, very good and warm story. And this local story is that the Edgar Allan Poe Classical School here on the far south side of the city of Chicago was one of 340 schools recently recognized as a national blue ribbon school for 2017. The recognition is based on the school's overall academic performance or progress in closing achievement gaps among the students' subgroups, which includes blacks and Latinos. And it's a very, very important honor. The National Blue Ribbon School honors public and private elementary, middle, and high schools where students achieve very high learning standards and are making notable improvements in closing the achieve achievement gap. Now in its 35th year, the National Blue Ribbon School program has been so, uh, pro, pro, uh, pro, oh wow, 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 wow. The National Blue Ribbon School program has bestowed recognition on more than 8,500 schools. In November, the Secretary and the Department of Education celebrated with the honorees at an award ceremony in Washington, D.C. My friends, this is a good thing for the city of Chicago. It's a good thing for our students, and it's a good thing to know that we, too, can achieve. There's a Stanford study that was published in 2016 that clearly indicates that Chicago's grammar schools are among the nation's leaders. 
That's a wonderful set of news for the city of Chicago, that our grammar schools are achieving higher than almost any other grammar school system in the United States of America. These are good times and we want to celebrate and con congratulate the students and the faculty and, uh, of the Edgar Allan Poe Classical Elementary School. Well done, keep up the good work, and I want you to know, I wish I could go back to grammar school. If I could, I might enroll over there at the Edgar Allan Poe Grammar School. Listen, my friends, it's been wonderful to be with you today, and it's been wonderful to enjoy our moment with each other. I want you to appreciate the fact that we still are living in the United States of America. All things are possible. All things are possible for us because we are a people committed to each other. And I want to say this, for those who want to engage in division and, and segregation and nullification, it's time for us to remember that we are the United States of America. We have a diverse population here in the United States of America. And we stand for freedom and justice for all Americans. This is Leon Finney, and you can run and tell that.